Hey guys, Kyle of the Death Knight of Enemy here bringing you my review for One Piece. Sorry about that. One Piece chapter 909. And before I even talk about the chapter itself, uh, I need to mention that chapter title. Seppuku. <laughs> like, 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 of course, I, 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 I've read the chapter and I know the context of what the chapter means now. Like, they just pretty much played it up as, as kind of like a little bit of a... As, as a little bit of a as a little bit of a gag or something like that, but holy shit, Oda, you have some serious balls for for basically titling a chapter after bit after a Japanese after a Japanese suicide after a Japanese after a method of of suicide. Like seriously, that's that's essentially what seppuku is. Like yeah, just naming it seppuku. Holy shit, Oda, like yeah, you've uh. You're, <laughs> I, I know, like, Oda, Oda, I know you're intense, buddy, but do you have to show it in the fucking titles? That's, yeah, that is kind of dark, bro. Like, I know you, like, yeah, like, Oda, I know you like going to dark places, but calm your tits, bro. <laughs> but anyway, um, let's, uh, let's talk about the chapter itself, because I'm not going to lie, this actually was a very heavy loaded chapter. Like, there was so much shit to take in in this chapter that it's actually kind of incredible. So, we start off by getting a reintroduction to Marco after so long and see what he's up to. And I'm not going to lie, I was a little taken off guard by the fact that he's a doctor now. Or maybe it was the glasses. I'm not sure which one, but yeah, it was, let's just say for, for the sake of argument, it was definitely both. The fact that he's turned into what he's, he's become a doctor now and the, fa and the fact that he was wearing glasses, like, that was just odd, like, the, the, the glasses, I think, was actually the more odd thing compared to him being a doctor, but, yeah, that was just, but, yeah, that, but that was just odd, but anyway, this does, uh, <clears throat> this does show that, this does finally show confirmation that he pretty much survived the, the payback war, the payback war with Blackbeard, and I'm not gonna lie, seeing him live, live his life so peacefully like that after Whitebeard's death does, it, it does give me some very, it does give me, it does give me some very, it does give me a lot of heavy, it does show a lot of heavy parallels between, it does show a lot of heavy parallels and then even mimics what, what pretty much, like, if you compare what, what, if you compare what, what pretty much Marco's become now, it very heavily mimics what, what happened to Rayleigh after, after Roger died. In fact, even though it wasn't mentioned what happened to the others, I... I wouldn't be surprised if the other Whitebeard parts are completely off the grid at this point. And although knowing Oda, the, the way the way I've come to know the, the way he writes One Piece, I imagine how he's playing this up is that uh, is that okay okay right now we pretty much have Marco pretty much li living a very peaceful life, a, a doctor, a doctor and whatnot, but but and and from what we know the, the other Whitebeard parts are more than likely off the grid now. But knowing him, ex exactly how he played it out with Ray Lake, pretty much coming, pretty much coming back into kind of a, a semi life of piracy. I I imagine Oda is kind of keeping them, is kind of keep, is kind of saving their, is kind of saving the, the rest of the, the White Beard pirates reappearance for pretty much the, the, the whole big throne war. Which honestly is it, it, it is if that is his plan, it is it is definitely a, a nice thing to it is a nice. It is nice to nice to know what he's probably gonna plan, but at the same time, it's like okay, you you, you have the white paired pirates waiting in the wing to help Luffy out in the future. Can we kind of get a little more little more on what the other Roger pirates are doing? Because I really want to get I really definitely want to get get more Roger pirates in in this shtick now too. So yeah, can we please get that? Or or and although maybe considering what happened in this chapter, it, it won't be it won't be too far it won't be too far off for us getting. Maybe another Roger Pirate reveal, but who knows? Um, but anyway, along with and along with uh, Marco's reappearance, we get a rather frightening reveal that we get a rather frightening reveal about the whole world government in general, apparently, and and a little bit on on the reverie itself too, and a little that, that pertains to the reverie that's going on right now, which is that apparently. Al unallied countries of the world government gain that title because they can't pay the heavenly tribute. 
you guys know what this essentially means, right? Essentially, if I'm understanding it correctly, what this whole what what this what this tight what this slapping of the title of unallied countries means is that ally, the the current allied countries of the world government are basically being held for ransom by the world government and and the celestial dragons. That is like. That is so fucked up, and it's kind of ironic in a way, but but by having this system in place, they're essentially responsible for every single problem with this world, and it was only through pirate money, blood money, dirty money, that the island white beard hail firm was able to survive this oppression. Like... It it really like of course we've basically always always known this to be kind of to be kind of a bit of a to be to be kind of a bit of an ironic fact about One Piece, but it really just fully showcases that pirates are bigger heroes than than the fucking the 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 the, 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 the goddamn than the goddamn government that that's pretty much hails that pretty much controls the entire world. Like the the world the world government really is really is a nightmare of a of, of a system it really freaking is and what 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 makes this even even more of a frightening thing is that it shows why wapple was so smug towards dalton if the sakura kingdom fails to keep up the tribute payments then they're out and and what and if you even if if you look at what the soccer kingdom is, the fact that they have a pirate flag as their as as, as their national symbol, then that even then that even adds more kind of even more kind of even more kind of weight to promote the to to promote the, the entire situation with them because if the soccer kingdom fails to deliver on their tribute payments and they become an al unallied country, then at that point they're going to be considered a lawless pirate island. That. That's pretty much all, all they're going to be known as. Like, like Chopper's homeland is going to is is more than likely going to be targeted by the world government at that point. And I I wouldn't I I honestly I, I wouldn't even put it past I wouldn't even put it past the world government in order to issue a buster call against the island too. I mean, it's it wouldn't, I mean, it, it, it would be considered a lawless island at that point, so who knows what, what they would do in order to show their power. And, and especially with, with, with the whole reveal of Eam and, and, the, and the five, and especially what, what builds this up to is the, fa is, is the previous chapter we got of Eam kind of, as the five solos, is the five, uh, is the five elder stars pretty much bound before Eam asking who's going to be, Who's going to be like? Who's going to be eliminated next, so to speak? Yeah, like all signs are pointing so far to me in terms of the, in terms of the Drum Kingdom being next. Um. Now. <laughs> now I assume Oda's going to give a definitive answer at some point, but one thing that I wouldn't like, I wouldn't say it surprised me about this chapter, but it but is keeping me intrigued was how Marco explained the whole Weevil situation and it was done in a way where Oda cleverly left us with a red herring by only by only saying that Whitebeard and Bakin were on the same ship together like it only gives enough in order to say that okay so so pretty much, so pretty much these two were, were on the same ship together that's pretty much all we know um which which still kind of which I don't know honestly like at the, like when you look at Weevil's appearance it looks like she pretty much just sewed like she pretty much just sewed him together in order to look like Whitebeard's son so we don't really know for we 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 still definitely don't we still don't don't know for sure whether or not he's Weevil's legitimately Whitebeard's son or not although 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 we also get Although even that, and although we do, we do get, we, we do get an idea as to what they're after. They're pretty much after Whitebeard's inheritance. So, yeah, even, but, but yeah, and so yeah, Weevil is, I like how Oda is still keeping the mystery of Weevil and kind of, pretty much vague, I guess you could say. And, 
But after the whole Marco stuff, we switch over to the place we've all been wanting to see for a long time, Wano. And I don't know if it, if it is, I don't know what it is, if it's just that the country does have a heavier lean towards traditional Japanese samurai culture or what, but the moment I, I laid eyes on, on the whole, like, on the whole, on the whole, on the whole Wano Island itself and just, and its design as well as, on, and it's just, like the, the design of Wano is beautiful, but the moment I laid eyes on that, as well as just, as well as the straw, and the, um, but that combined with the what I saw with the straws and their disguises, I my, my mind immediately got the vibes of the boss Luffy filler side story episodes. Like j just pretty much seeing seeing the straw hats in one o in those disguises, it really gave me. It really gave me those boss Luffy side story filler vibes. Like I, I, I got flashbacks to, I got flashbacks to watching, to watching those episodes again. The only thing, like seriously, the, the only thing that was missing in those, in those, uh, in, 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 in this particular sense was was Buggy in his, in his, in his Japanese gangster clothes and uh, in his Japanese, in his Japanese gangster clothes, I guess, and and boss Luffy himself, but. Uh, but yeah, I just I seriously got a I seriously got a vibe of of the whole boss Luffy stuff, and 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 I gotta say, Robin in a geisha outfit, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, that is a triple plus on the on the sexiness meter for me. And Robin as a Robin already was pretty much a naturally sexy. A naturally sexy character to be a naturally sexy character to begin with, to be honest with you. But yeah, her as a geisha, that shit is love. It. I love it. <laughs> uh, and and yeah, the mo the moment Kinemon said to avoid causing a scene, we knew some shit was gonna go down. Like, there's just no avoiding it. When, when, whenever 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 Kinemon. Actually, whenever whenever someone says to the straw hats in order to avoid be in order to avoid causing trouble or avoid or avoid making a scene, you know inevitably they're going to make a fucking scene. It's like it's like a commandment of the straw hat crew that they're always going to do some shit that's gonna it's gonna cause them to to make a ruckus. And I guess in this case it's. I guess in this case I can say it's a good thing because it didn't it didn't waste any time in getting to in 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 shit falling apart. But uh, yeah, um, they're they're about to cause some serious problems in Wano that is going to inevitably lead to Kaido possibly making an appearance. Luffy, hurry your ass up before Kaido gets there. Like seriously, hurry up, dude. You don't want to. Oh god, yeah, just hurry up, man! Like, with with, with what Zoro did, Kaido's basically on his way. You know that's gonna be a fact now. So yeah, <laughs> and, um, but in a way, I honestly can't blame Zoro completely because if you look at what happened in this chapter, it was really also just a series of unfortunate circum. It was all based on a series of unfortunate circumstances that that were building up to this because the fact that Zoro. Was now wielding the pretty, pretty much it, it, pretty much wielding the famous shoe sh sweep blade. It was almost kind of inevitable that it was going to happen anyway, I guess. And and what also really caught my eye about about the fact that about this about this too about Zoro's whole thing is that Oda did seem to draw specifically to attention attention to and attention to the. To pretty much the shoe sweep blade, which oh, <clears throat> which does tell me that Zoro and the shoe sweep blade are going to have a heavy focus in this arc. Like, are going to have a heavy focus in the in the Wano arc for sure going forward. Like, Wano, Wano, Wano is definitely a big play. Is definitely a, a big arc. It's definitely a big play, player arc in the series for sure. And 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 I think. This is going to be time where we are going to get a lot more development out of Zoro now too, which I'm I'm welcome to. I'm I'm always welcome for I'm always welcome to get in order for Zoro to get some development. So yeah, here's here's just praying and hoping, I guess. But um, yeah, guys, that's my review. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Death and Anime. Signing off. Later, guys.